This video will be about heat and the three modes of heat transfer. What is heat and how is it transferred from one place to another? Learn to understand the concept of heat capacity, latent heat, heat conduction, heat convection and thermal radiation. Heat is, is a form of internal kinetic energy. Um, the three pictures below uh, illustrates how the different atoms and molecules can vibrate inside a material or they can move around or they can have rotational energy. Um, heat capacity is used in order to um, specify how much energy is required to, to increase the temperature of a substance. So the picture shows one kilogram of water in this example with the initial temperature of T0 or T0 and in order to increase the temperature with one degree C, it requires 4,200 joules or 4.2 kilojoules. So the specific heat capacity C is equal to 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram and, and, and degree C. In the formula, if we would like to look at a certain substance and certain temperature change, we have that the required energy or required heat is equal to the specific heat Specific heat capacity C times the mass M times the temperature change, delta T. Heat flow. It has the unit watt. It uh, tells you how many, how much energy is that is transferred per unit time. And here it is illustrated how uh, heat is transferred from an area A to an area B. Uh, and we have the heat flow equal to Q. Uh, and if we would like to know how much energy that has been transferred during a certain time period, T, we have it as energy is equal to effect times the time, and the formula E equals to Q times T, and then we get it in Joule, the unit for energy. An example, let's say Q is equal to 2000 Watt, so 2 kilowatt, and it's transferred during the time of 2 hours, that's 2 times 3600 seconds, and then we have E equal to 2,000 times 2 times 3,600, that's 14.4 million joules. We can also use uh, the unit kilowatt hours for energy. And then we multiply the number of kilowatt, which is 2, and multiply it with the number of hours, which is 2. That makes 4 kilowatt hours. Latent heat of water. Uh, energy... Latent heat is called um, the amount of energy that is required to make a phase change. For instance, we have thawing or melting of ice, so going from solid phase to um, the liquid phase requires 330 kilojoules per kilogram. If we would like to evaporate it, uh, so we go from liquid water to water vapor, it requires even more, 2,260 kilojoules per kilogram. And we can compare it with uh, the heat specific heat capacity of water, which is 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius, or, uh, which is quite a low, low amount. And then we have um, a regular specific heat capacity for ordinary building materials. That's around 0.8 to 0.9 kilojoules per kilogram Celsius. So, in, in general, we have quite high numbers for uh, water, high heat capacity, and high latent uh, heat transfer. Um, this re will result in all the water that we have on, on Earth stabilizes the climate, for instance. All the water in the oceans and the Great Lakes uh, stabilizes the climate. It requires a lot of energy to change its temperature, so we get a more stable temperature in that way. This diagram shows how uh, the, we change phase or change temperature for water going from minus 100 to plus 200. And here we go from minus 100 to uh, zero degree. We have solid ice and the slope is determined by the specific heat capacity. And then we, uh, we thaw it, melt it, uh, keeping the same temperature zero all the time. And then we go in liquid phase up to 100 degrees to boiling. Uh, and then evaporation, stable temperature of 100 degree, and then we can heat up the vapor from 100 to 200, which requires energy coupled to the specific heat of water vapor. 
Heat transfer. There are three modes of heat transfer. The, uh, the conduction, which goes through solid material, that like heat transferred by internal movements of molecules or atoms inside the material. We have the convection, which is caused by air movements or fluid movements, where the fluid uh, carry heat and moves heat from one space to another. And we have radiation, it, which uh, where we have a, a heat transfer based on, on electromagnetic waves. Heat flows always from warmer to colder substance in a spontaneous way, and the rate depends on the temperature difference, the area exposed, and the type of materials in between. Here we have the, the part from the first picture, the teapot, where it's, we heat water on top of a, a fireplace, and here we have all the three modes of heat transfer. We have the yellow arrows, the heat conduction, where we have heat conduction from the bottom of the pot, going through the metal into the water. We also have conduction from the fireplace down to the soil. We have convection, which is uh, air moving into the fireplace, dragged into the fireplace, heated up and moves out and carrying heat. The radiation, where we have these electromagnetic waves from the hot fireplace to the, to the, uh, the pot and from the fireplace to the surroundings. So we have all three modes here. A summary. Heat capacity shows how much heat that is stored in the material when the temperature is increased by one degree C. Latent heat shows how much energy that is required to make a phase change of a material. The numbers for heat capacity and latent heat is relatively high for water compared with other materials. There's three modes of heat transfer, heat conduction, heat convection and thermal radiation.